Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today's video, we're gonna go over uh, sort of a tutorial on how to invest in stocks. Um, you know, we're gonna talk about uh, researching, how to, you know, discover industries and, and find stocks that, that might be a good investment. Um, so this video is, is strictly for educational purposes, okay? Uh, so I, I encourage you that after you finish this video, um, you know, you continue to do the research that you do, do your own research and also, um, you know, invest in, in what you know. Okay, so let's get straight to it. Um, I, I use Fidelity uh, investment account. So there's a couple of different, uh, you know, companies where you can invest in. Uh, Fidelity is one of those. TD Ameritrade. Uh, I believe E-Trade is still out there. Robinhood. Uh, but overall... Fidelity uh, has really good research tools to find uh, good investments. So uh, I thought this would be a good place to start. So I'm on the Fidelity News and Research, and I went ahead and clicked in, on stocks. And so this brings me to this page here. So um, I think this is a good place to start because it gives you sort of a, a, a very broad uh, list of industries that you can look into. And so just to kind of scroll through some of these we have uh, communication services consumer discretionary uh, consumer staples energy financials healthcare industrials uh, information technology materials real estate and utilities so uh, you know to, you want to make sure like okay so you know, it's okay if you're not an expert in all of these industries. Um, I think when you're selecting stocks, I think uh, you need to be, you know, familiar with uh, some industries, and but you don't have to be an expert for all the industries. So um, I can tell you, you know, it, invest in what you know, so or or with what you're familiar with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, uh, we're going to look into industrials, uh, which is a industry that I'm somewhat familiar with and I, I feel comfortable investing. So we'll go to industrials and it looks like there's a snapshot here. So the next thing I want to go to, well, we can look at a couple of different things. We can look at industries and then we can look at investments. So first we'll start off with industries. Uh, so let's see what kind of industrial industries there are. There's aerospace and defense, air freight and logistics, uh, airlines, building products, commercial services and supplies, construction, engineering, electrical equipment, industrial conglomerates, machinery, marine, professional services, road and trail, uh, trading companies, distributors, transportation infrastructure. Um, and these these metrics here give you a, a, an idea of how these industries are performing. So you see you'll uh, year to date, one year, three year, and five year. And it's interesting that, uh, you know, some of these industries like aerospace defense has a 52% a uh, increase over a five-year period. Um, so, you know, these are some metrics to kind of gauge whether some of these industries are on, on the rise or are on the decline. As you see, like the airlines industries uh, is experiencing a decline uh, the past five years now. That, that probably has to do with this year because this, this is a year to uh, 2020 uh, cr with the coronavirus and it's been a really bad year for the airlines. Um, however, that's not that's not a, a, a true indicator that that this will be a future performance for airlines in the future. So uh, just but something to keep in mind. Okay, so I like the idea of air freight and logistics just because uh, you know there we're seeing a, a high demand in distribution and shipping so I, I think this this would be a, a, a pretty good industry to look into is air freight and logistics um, so we'll go ahead and click on that now what I want to do is I want to find investments within this industry the air freight and logistics and uh, a couple key things that will pop up here so you have three categories to choose from you can invest in individual stocks such as stock companies uh, you can invest in ETFs, which are uh, stands for exchange exchange traded funds, which basically is a is a uh, 
pa it's basically like a mutual fund, but it's it's a passively managed fund, and, and it will include um, a, a sort of a, a portfolio of different companies. Uh, so this is great for for beginners if you're not necessarily a, a stock savvy investor. Uh, a safer choice might be to go towards the ETFs, and then of course you also have uh, mutual funds. Uh, the difference between ETFs and mutual funds is the, the mutual funds, uh, they have a, a active fund manager that manages all the trades that go into the fund, that happen within the fund. So mutual funds is, is really for the passive investor, which uh, prefers to um, you know have a fund manager actively looking for new investments to trade within the fund. And then... Uh, exchange would be more so you're tracking a, a certain index uh, of funds. So, um, you know, I, I personally um, like ETFs better uh, simply because I like to have more of a, a hands-on uh, approach on my investments. And they're also uh, cheaper versus the, the fund, the mutual funds, because the mutual funds uh, usually or typically charge a higher fees because they have to pay the, the fund manager. Or or the, the the management company. Okay, so let's start with stocks. Um, we're gonna go ahead and click review all results and criteria, and we should get a list of companies here. Um, okay, so we have basic facts, uh, performance and volatility, valuation, growth, and ownership. Um, so what I like to go to is valuation and growth and what we can do here is we can actually uh, download the, the these files so we can go ahead and just click download results and I just want to get uh, valuation and growth ownership and let's see how what that looks like um, so I should get a pop-up and here we go okay so if you have Excel or some sort of spreadsheet Okay, so this is great because it's not a very big list of companies. We can easily uh, filter through these. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this because I'm going to do some filtering. And let's see. Um, you know what I forgot to add was maybe the market capitalization. So let, let me go back and let me close this. And then um, I'll, I need to look at the market capitalization. So we'll download again. Uh, I, I believe it was basic facts. Uh, let's just go ahead and download all these. Okay. Okay, that's much better. All right, so we have uh, basic facts, market capitalization. Um, so actually, these might be hard to filter. So let's see, basic facts, performance, and volatility. Okay. All right, so this will give you an indicator of how companies are priced. Uh, in terms of stock price and what we want to look at is see which companies are are selling at a good price uh, so that's going to be the PE ratio which is price to earnings uh, ratio and it looks like we don't have any P ratios for these four stocks so I'm just going to delete that so it doesn't skew the, the the averages and then you also want to look at the peg ratio so so the peg ratio is, is really uh, the price of earnings divided by the, the, the recent growth of the stock. So this is a good metric because you can see, you know, typically, um, you know, I'll explain this in a bit. So what we want to do first is let's find out what the average P ratio is within this industry. So what we'll do is we'll create uh, a filter so we can sort of sort these from largest to smallest or smallest to largest. And then I also, I'm just going to delete these because I don't have P ratios or pegs. Um, so I'm not really interested there. And I want to find the average uh, P ratio for these stocks. Okay, and 51. And then I also want to find the average for the peg ratio. So we know the average uh, P ratio is 51 times earnings. Um, okay, and let's see what the minimum is. So we'll go minimum P ratio. Um, so we can find out what's the lowest P ratio as well as the peg ratio. 
and then also the max so we know what's the max p ratio within this set of companies so we're going to go max and then get the max okay so we have a minimum p ratio of 23 uh, we have a maximum uh, or average of 51 times and we have a maximum of 144 uh, so that's that's how you can base whether these prices are, are overpriced or underpriced and then you also want to look at the pig the pig ratio to determine um, how fast the company is growing uh, re uh, relevant to to their stock uh, price earnings ratio okay so right off the bat I want to find something that's within the 51 uh, P ratio and below because that tells me this these stocks could be potentially overvalued um, so we have hub group um, so what we can do now is we can kind of uh, f filter even more so I'm gonna just delete these P ratios and I'm gonna delete the blanks as well well let's leave the blanks okay all right and then also P ratio so when you're when it comes to peg ratio you the you the, the lowest peg ratio uh, is probably the better um, so out of all of these companies um, it looks like FedEx is the one with the lowest peg ratio and a price earnings ratio of 42.5 which is pretty good considering that the average is 51 so I like FedEx we'll highlight that and let's see what else uh, that looks like it's gonna be it so you know I'm very familiar with FedEx as a company so I right off the bat I, I like the sound of that so I'm gonna go back to my fidelity account and we're gonna click on we're gonna type in the ticker which is FTX okay so FTX should be FedEx all right so this is a stock page couple of things we want to look at here is not much useful information here uh, you can see it's sort of a historical stock price um, throughout the years and then we want to scroll down okay so here you have some more uh, earnings per share price to earnings so this is interesting so 42 uh, so this might be taken into the entire account, the entire logistics industry, um, 42 P ratio and a 37 industry average. Uh, so one thing you want to look at is this summary here. Uh, you want to make sure you understand the business uh, from a very big picture. Um, so FedEx Corporation provides transportation, e-commerce, and business services worldwide. Its FedEx Express segment offers shipping services for delivery, of packages and freight. Its FedEx ground segment offers business and residential money back guaranteed ground package delivery services um, and consolidates and delivers low weight and less time sensitive business to consumer packages. Its FedEx freight segment offers less than truckload and over freight delivery services as of May uh, 30, 31st, 2020. This segment had approximately 30,000 vehicles and 373 service centers. Its FedEx services segment provides sales, marketing, information, technology, communications, customer service, technical support, billing and collection, and other back office support services. It also offers FedEx Mobile a suite of solutions of track packages, create shipping labels, view account specific rate quotes, and access drop off location information. Uh, FedEx offers a suite of printing and shipping management solutions, including digital printing, professional fishing, uh, document creation, design, direct mall, signs and graphics, custom printed boxes, copying, computer rental, Wi-Fi and corporate print solutions and packaging services, supplies and boxes, as well as FedEx Express uh, and FedEx Ground Shipping Services. Its co corporate other elimination segment offers international trade services and customs brokerage and ocean air freight forwarding services, cross-border uh, enablement and technology solutions. And the e-commerce transportation solutions, integra int integrated uh, supply chain management solutions, time critical shipping services, and critical inventory and service parts logistics and technology repair. 
It offers international trade uh, advisory services, including assistance with custom trade partnerships uh, against terrorism program, and publishes custom duty and tax information. It has a strategic alliance with Microsoft Corp. Oh, that's interesting. And the company was founded in 1971. It's headquartered in, in Memphis, Tennessee. So, very, uh, very, very attractive business, in my opinion. Um, logistics, you know, supply chain management, very interesting. Uh, here you can look at some of the competitors. Um, so you have UPS, you have um, YRC Worldwide, Old Dominion, Arcbest. Um, and so this is a company we, we want to look at as well, just because it's very similar to FedEx, and you can figure out um, which company it, you, you'd prefer to invest in. All right, the next thing we want to look at is uh, fundamental analysis. Looks like it, it's uh, slightly... Um, above average overvalued um, however uh, you know the growth stability and the future growth prospect uh, may compensate for the higher price so you know that to me when I look at a growth company you know if there's if it's slightly overvalued and it has good growth outlook um, you know that's that's fine with me and you see it's it's ranked on the higher end of the scale in terms of financial health which we'll look at and a uh, good amount of quality okay so, so far so good. Let's go over to key statistics. And we should get a range of metrics here. All right, so valuation, uh, market cap, $74.44 billion in market capitalization. So it's a relatively large company compared to the industry uh, with the $4.10 billion. Uh, price earning ratio slightly above industry average. Uh, peg ratio is 1.6, which is lower than the industry average. So that's a really good sign to me. Is this company is growing at a really good rate? Uh, enterprise value. All right, we have some book value uh, metrics here as well. Let's go over to the earnings per, the growth metrics. So growth metrics. Last five years, this stock has grown six uh, percent, less than the industry average of 12 percent. Um, Projected growth this year versus next year, 9%. Industry average is 15%. And the forward earnings per share long-term growth rate within the next three to five years is 26%, which is uh, about 13% higher than the industry average. So that's a good sign. Um, let's see here. Free cash flow is something I look at just to make sure the company has enough cash to run. Uh, as you see, the company has $1.3 billion of, of trillion 12 month dollar billion dollars of cash uh, compared to the industry is 4.2 uh, 4.22 billion dollars of cash so um, you know w w would preferably have liked this company to have a bit more cash than than what they have now um, but based on you know their 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 market capitalization I, I think I'm okay with the amount of cash that they have on hand. Okay, let's look at their profit margins. So the profit margins, you know, you have top line gross margin of 24%, uh, which is better than industry average. Earnings before interest and, and taxes and, and de depreciation is 10%. Um, so just looking at this, how we go from 24% gross margin to 10% gross margin, industry goes from 18 to 13. So, uh, Operating margins, uh, something there's, you know, maybe something in their operating expenses that's showing is really high. So that's something we want to look at is is why uh, is the is the margins from gross to earnings before interest uh, reducing that much? Okay, profit margin, which is the the, the margin net income margin, is six percent, two percent less than industry average. Uh, operating margin as well 5% versus 9% and then pre-tax margin is 3% is 7% so okay all right let's look at the next metric so returns on equity which is 9% sounds about fair and compared to industry average is 60% so that's interesting it looks like there might be some companies out there that are really uh, delivering much greater return on equity so we might want to look at, at some of those companies as well Assets, assets under man, uh, return on assets, 2% versus 6%, return on investment, 3%, and uh, 10%. Okay, so, so far, I'm getting the, the picture that this is a, a very large company. Obviously, FedEx has been around. 
um, you know, you could consider consider this a, a large cap uh, company. So I think something that we can expect uh, from this type of company is we're not going to see really uh, great return, you know, like uh, like double digit returns. I think this is a company that will deliver, uh, you know, steady returns over time uh, be, because of the size of the company uh, and, and, and maybe uh, because of the of, of the current business stage this company is in, which I would say it's probably in, in between the growth to mature stage of, of the business cycle. Um, okay, let's look at the, the amount of debt this company is holding. Uh, so first thing I'm going to look at is the total debt to asset uh, trailing 12 month. It's 48% compared to industry average of 42%. So 48%, I, I think I can live with, you know, normally... Um, I personally don't like to invest in companies with over 40% in debt just because, you know, my, my fear is that they might have difficulty meeting their debt obligations if, if they take on too much debt. But for a company of this size, I think uh, a 48% is okay. Um, so just something to keep in mind is you want to look at how much company, how much debt does a company have and, and does it have enough uh, cash to, to meet those short-term and long-term obligations. And another metric that you can go by to, to gauge whether they can meet those obligations is the current ratio. So the current ratio is 1.4. Um, that's plenty of, of that's, a, that's a good ratio to have that, that tells you uh, they have enough liquidity to, to meet their debt obligations. So again, really big company. I, I think it's a safe pick. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be your... Tesla, it's not going to be your high growth tech stocks. I think this is a big company that you can rely on uh, to, to generate you consistent returns. Um, so let's go back to the summary and a couple more things we'll, we'll look at. Um, uh, and, you know, you can go ahead and look at the financial statements. And, you know, we, we, we saw uh, some of the, the fi financial you know, flags we saw was the operating expenses. So you can go over to the income statement and we can just get a sense of, you know, what their operating expenses are. And um, it looks like, let's see, we have cost of goods sold, gross profit margins, and selling general and administrative expenses. And right off the bat, I mean, this is, you know, probably uh, $10, $10 billion in, in expenses uh, when it comes to selling general administrative expenses, which makes sense. You know, they, they have office workers, they have uh, trucks and, you know, deliveries. And so you, it makes sense why they'd have uh, pretty high expenses. Um, but obviously, you know, they're they're bringing in $69 billion of, of, in, of, of, of sales and, you know, 10 billion is going towards uh, expenses. And then, so you scroll down to the bottom line uh, you'll see that they're they're profiting. You know, in 2019, uh, they profited 1.2 billion dollars in, in net income, which is phenomenal. Uh, okay, something you can look at also is cash flow statement. Um, you know, I think we I think we got a good sense of the balance sheet. I think you know they have 48 percent debt, so we can we can sort of glance at that. But this is the cash flow statement. Ca cash flow statement will kind of show you the cash inflows and outflows of the business. Um, you have top line is the net income, you know, um, obviously they're factoring some depreciation for some of the equipment or, or machinery um, or assets such as the trucks, um, you know, uh, equipment, plants. So good amount of operating net income cash flow, uh, you know, $5 billion in, in operating cash flow. Um, looks like they're continuously making investments in capital expenditures, which is, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a positive sign when a company is continuing to reinvest in their business. And, and you can see that by the amount of money they spend in capital expenditures. Um, so which, uh, looks like they're $5 billion in capital expenditures. Um, dividends, as you see, uh, FedEx has incre steadily increased their dividends, uh, from 2015 to 2019. So again, this is a good dividend stock, uh, in my opinion. Um, so some cash flow you can rely on on a quarterly basis. All right. And then in the end, you have uh, cash and cash equivalent increase. So 
again, good amount of investments, you know, steady, steady paying dividends. Uh, I like this stock as, as, uh, as a big, uh, reliable stock in my portfolio. Okay. Um, right. And the last thing you want to look at is, uh, you want, you want to get some financial reports from some, from, from some experts. And one source that I really like is going to be, uh, Zach's and hopefully there's a Zach's report here. Okay. So Zach's investment research, um, uh, 11 November 2nd, 2020. So pretty recent report. Um, you know, after, I, after I'm done with all my research, I just want to get some, some, additional information from from expert analysts that research these stocks and I, I, I think Zach's is a, is, a, is a really good source to go by um, so they have a, a report here that shows sort of um, you know just additional information overview uh, and uh, about the stock and then they'll give you some some reasons to buy the stock and so and then also they should uh, identify some of the potential risk of investing the, for the stock. So, um, so that's that's pretty much it. And so you know some additional research that you would want to look at is obviously uh, look at the competitors. Okay, and we saw one of the competitors was UPS. So you'd run the same type of research for UPS, and then um, and then that's what you want to compare. You want to compare: is it better? Is are you better off investing in FedEx or are you better off investing in UPS? Um, and so that's kind of a, the the basis, uh, very beginner level uh, research tips for investing in stocks. So I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, uh, please subscribe and, and and leave any comments if you have any questions down below. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you guys soon. Thank you.